I'm the Five Minute Professor. In today's lecture, totem poles, the, the native people of the Pacific Northwest of the United States, have been created, well, they're not just the United States, let's say the United States and Canada. All right, so they've been creating uh, and carving these large totems for at least, get ready, 200 years. It seemed like it should be longer than that. You see, probably not, though, because working the western red cedar, the tall, straight trees of the Pacific Northwest, require metal tools, and the Native American populations had no metallurgy. So the earliest carvings were probably made with found metal from shipwrecks or trade with trappers. Totem poles evolved from smaller, just two to four foot house posts to funerary markers, like, uh, like a wooden tombstone, uh, to memorialize uh, the clan symbols that we think of as totem poles today, does, uh, that it might be dozens of feet tall. Totem poles have never been worshipped. No matter what you think about totem poles, that's not what they're for. They're for saying, hey, look, this is us. This is our family. This is our village. Uh, there's no standard hierarchy of importance related to their position on the pole. You probably heard the expression, low man on the totem pole. Well, it doesn't really have a meaning because in the, the native thought process, the one at the bottom of the totem pole is really holding up everyone else on the totem pole. The large totem poles would typically be at the center of a village and serve as a sort of introduction to the clan that lives there. So if you came in and you were a visitor, it would more or less say, hey, this is our story. There's a variation of totem poles known as shame poles that would be posted when a clan owed a debt, which would tell that story. So when people came into town, they would see the shame pole and it would be sad. When a clan moved to a new village, the pole would be allowed to rot in place because... Now we got a new story. We got a new place. We're going to make a new pole in the new place. And why are we going to drag this old damn pole around? Tribal units were fairly migrant, moving on when local resources were low, which makes sense when you're spread out. You know, when the, the fish aren't biting anymore, or the, the reindeer and the caribou have moved on, you, you go someplace else. Well, of course, we can't do that now, but they could do that then. As a result, there's very little historical record of totem poles predating the late 19th century. Wilderness Lodge at Disney World, if you ever come to Orlando, I'm in Orlando. If you ever come to Orlando at Disney World, there's some great examples of what Pacific Northwest totem poles would be like. They're about 50 feet tall. Perceptum, Quispium, Damitium. Learn something, damn it. I'm the 5-Minute Professor, and thank you very much for listening to today's lesson. If you have any comments at all, please put them in the comments section down below. And of course, like it and subscribe to the channel. But most important, if you liked it, if you commented, and if you subscribed, tell your friends. Perceptum, Quispium, Damnetium. Learn something, damn it.